Hello friends welcome back to Cine World. Today I am going to explain you an adventure, sci-fi, thriller film from titled Voyagers. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. The Earth is dying. Scientists look for a new planet able to sustain human life and find it in. The year dot the planet is seen on screen while a woman explains that it is a planet humans can colonize. She continues saying that a scouting mission to the planet should be sent. Since the voyage there will take years, the crew of the mission will reproduce on the ship, making the third generation on board the one to reach the planet. The crew is genetically engineered on Earth by combining the genes of leading scientists. A man is seen talking about the reasoning behind this plan, justifying why the crew will be specifically engineered to man the mission, consisting of children raised and trained solely for its purpose. The next step is assessing when they'll be ready to go. The younger the crew is, the longer the resources can be preserved. But, the man, Richard, is worried that they might not be fully equipped to deal with the complexity of space travel on their own. Later, Richard is seen entering a facility where the child crew is being raised and he gets into full protective gear. He enters the rooms where they live and when they see him they all rejoice. Richard monitors where they are in their education and then tucks Christopher, Sella, and Zack into bed. Zack tells him that he's afraid, but Richard comforts him by telling him that he's safe. The next day, Richard is talking to a woman in charge of the mission. He tells her that he should go with the children to raise and protect them. Richard's addition to the mission would also mean that it will be able to launch in years. Instead of dot next, the mission launches with Richard on the helm. The shuttle docks with Humanitas, the ship for the mission. They all go inside and find their quarters. Richard takes one last look of Earth. Years later, the children are already adults, as they can be seen waking and getting ready to start their days on the ship. The first lesson covers the fertilization for the second generation, which will begin in the th year of their lives. The crew goes about their day like robots. They're seen drinking a blue liquid. Christopher and Zack are listening to classical music. Sella walks through the ship and looks out at the space around them. Later, she talks to Richard, saying that the lives of the crew are unimportant. Trying to comfort her, he shows her pictures of his grandparents, telling her that providing for the future is very important. That night, Christopher can't sleep. He listens to the sounds of the ship. The next day, Richard and Christopher are in the hydroponics bay checking the state of the plants, when a message about toxicity in the water appears on Christopher's screen. He asks Richard about it, thinking it's some kind of chemical that isn't being processed from their urine, but Richard dismisses his concerns. He's skeptical about it. So, later, he asks Zack about the ingredient EJ. They wonder why the information is unavailable. During the night, the two of them go back to figure out what it is. Christopher bypasses the firewall and is able to find the information. The chemical ingredient is found in the blue liquid they drink. Zack thinks it was a digestion aid, but they figure out that it has other effects on their personality. It makes them dull and docile, decreasing their desires and pleasure responses. They're being drugged and pacified, so they don't reproduce naturally and overpopulate the ship. The two of them stop drinking the blue liquid. Later, they share the information with Kai and Julie, along with the information about a hidden compartment on the ship. Later, Christopher is in a session with Richard. He says he knows that he's been lying to them, but only mentions the unmarked compartment. Pod. Richard tells him that the mission must have lied to them for a reason, that the pod might be for the third generation. After the session, Richard sends a message back to Earth asking if he could share everything with the crew and be honest with them so they don't lose faith in him. The message will take time to get there. The next day, while standing in line next to Scylla, Christopher has a fantasy about her. They eat lunch, and he keeps looking at her, but Zack approaches her telling her that she's changed. Richard comes in and tells him not to grab her, as per the rules. In the gym, Christopher and Zack are seen fighting and taking it a bit too far. The others don't understand what's happening. The two of them start feeling the effects of not taking the drug. They hear the ship noises and go to an observation room where they see one of their fellow crew members. The three of them talk about what it might be, so he tells them that he thinks it might be some kind of alien life form. Sella and Richard are in his office and he shows her dried plants from Earth. Zack and Christopher hear them talking and approach the room. Zack sees Richard touching Sella's shoulder and gets jealous. They lose contact with Earth and Richard informs them that their transmitter needs to be fixed. Zack will come with him while the others continue with their roles. The preparations are underway as Zack sees Scylla and approaches her again. 
she tells him about the suit he'll be wearing, and he starts touching her inappropriately. Richard runs in and gets him off of her. He asks Zack what's happening, but he runs away. Looking for him, Richard sees Phoebe on the way, and she tells him that he stopped taking the blue. Next, he runs into Christopher and finds out that he stopped taking the drug as well. They argue, but Richard tells him that the drug was implemented to stop precisely the type of behavior witnessed in Zack. He asks Christopher to help him fix the transmitter so that when it's online he'll back him up when he voices his objections to mission control. All of the other crew members are on their positions in the ship while prep for the spacewalk is underway. Zack enters the systems room. Richard and Christopher go outside the ship. Christopher is experiencing sensations he hasn't felt before, so Richard keeps an eye on him. Richard repairs one of the transmitter parts then goes over to the second one. Inside the ship, the noises from the ship can be heard again, and the crew is getting restless. They check to see if anything else is outside, and suddenly something appears on the screen next to Richard and Christopher. It hurts Richard, hurling him away from the ship. The ship has some kind of malfunction as well. No one knows what has happened. There is a fire in the systems room. Christopher brings Richard inside, and they take him to medical. All kinds of errors appear on the ship, from navigation to communication. The medical team and Sela are trying to resuscitate Richard, but it doesn't work. Sela is the chief medical officer and pronounces him dead. Later, the crew has a meeting where they speak about what has happened. They mention the creaking sound. One of the crew members says he saw something on the monitor when it happened that looked like a force jumping into Richard, like it was something alien. Phoebe starts crying. Christopher comforts them, saying that if they keep it together, they'll be all right. The systems reboot and the crew is checking the surveillance archive, but all of the footage has been deleted by the fire in the systems room. They need to choose a new chief officer. Zack says that he should be chief, but the others say that they need an election. All of them vote and place Christopher as chief officer. Zack is jealous, but congratulates him regardless. First order of business is repairing the damage in the transmitter. He gets the entire crew working on the other repairs on the ship caused by the fire. The surveillance system is the last thing on the repair list so they can see what happened to Richard. They hope the drives are intact. Sela goes to his office and looks through his pictures and videos when Christopher arrives at the door. She tells him that she is supposed to destroy his personal archive even though she doesn't want to do it. She shows him Richard's photographs and they talk about the importance of parents. He asks why Richard told her about his life, thinking that they might have been more than friends, but she explains that he was just feeling alone. They look through his video diary, where he explains how much he believes in the mission and talks about how much he cares for them. Christopher is looking for the crew and finds them in the cantina, angry that they're not at their posts. Zack tells him that they're repairing the refrigerators so they don't lose any food. But there's a bunch of food that might go bad, so he asks him if they can have a feast to celebrate their new chief officer. After they eat, Kai tells the others not to drink the blue and they all dump it. Sela and Christopher are looking through Richard's videos laughing and enjoying themselves. Christopher feels increasingly more attracted to her. Zack feels attracted to Julie. He touches her. And she touches him back. The others are looking at them. Later, the crew can be seen play fighting and running around the ship, having fun. They all look through Richard's personal archive. Sela finds them in his quarters and tells them to leave, but they don't want to. Zack is the last to leave, telling Sela that Richard isn't there anymore to protect her. She goes back to the med bay and grabs a scalpel. Christopher is following Zack, worried he might do something to Sela when he finds out that she's in the med bay and goes there before Zack can. Zack arrives and Christopher pretends that the two of them are making love, so he leaves. Sela threatens him with the scalpel, not understanding his intentions. But when he says he's there to help her, she says he should help the rest of the crew because they're getting out of control. Christopher leaves and finds Zack along the way, telling him to stay away from Scylla when they hear the strange crackling noise again. He follows it around the ship, as others can hear it too. Kai sees Julie getting close to another crewman, so he flies into a rage and punches him off her. They fight. Later in the cantina, Christopher tries to get the crew to behave, but they don't like it. Suddenly, the crewman that Kai beat up starts hitting him with a tool. Christopher stops him by hitting him too. He tells everyone to get Kai and the other one treated and then to meet at the common room. In the meeting he tells everyone that the fighting has to stop and the reparations have to continue. Zack challenges him and the 
others think that they shouldn't be doing the work because they won't get to the end of the mission. Christopher says that their grandchildren will and that they need to support them. One of the crew members says he doesn't want to work in the systems room because the alien lives there. He thinks Christopher brought it in when Richard died. Phoebe suggests they repair the surveillance system and see what happened, but Zack belittles her and tells Christopher to shut up too. He doesn't care about the rules anymore and tries to get the others on his side, saying Christopher isn't the right leader. Zack thinks he should be the leader and tries to convince the rest of them to become a part of his group, which will be strong enough to fight the alien if it's there. Many of the crew follow him, but some of them stay on Christopher's side. That group goes to the surveillance room to fix the system, afraid the alien might be there. Christopher goes in first to check. Zack and the others roam the hallways and reach the system's room. Him and Kai go inside the room, not knowing Christopher has been in there too. They go deeper inside the room to look for the alien. The ones on the outside see something happening inside, and Zack and Kai run out terrified, sealing the room as they leave. Later, they tell the others from the group that the alien attacked them. Meanwhile, Christopher brings the surveillance drive to Sela in the med day. Him, her and a few others check the footage. They find the footage from the system's room and realize that it was Zack and Kai that killed Richard by electrocuting him, then lied about the alien. The group decides to keep quiet for the moment until they figure out what to do. Christopher and Sela hide the drive in her room and talk about Zack. He thinks that this is what they're really like without the drug, but she disagrees, saying that the two of them are different. He says that he's worried that the others won't care about the truth and that maybe he doesn't care either. Sela tells him to stay with her. They kiss and they sleep together. In the morning, there's a knock on Sela's door. It's Zack saying that he'll come inside one way or another. When she and Christopher open the door, Zack and Kai invite them to another celebration in the cantina. Christopher's group arrives while the others are already eating. Zack invites them to get some food. When they sit down, he stands up and proclaims himself the new chief officer. Suddenly, Christopher stands up too, goes to a monitor and plays the footage from the incident. He tells the others that Zack killed Richard and that there is no alien, that he's been lying to them. He suggests Zack confines himself in his room while they consult the program and they decide what to do. Everyone gets upset and Zack confesses, saying he did it to protect them because the alien was in Richard and Christopher brought it inside. He convinces the others that the alien is inside the ship, hiding in one of them. Zack says that they need to find it and kill it, to which they all agree. He pits them against each other and they start fighting. They think it's the crewman that works in the med bay and they start chasing after him. Christopher follows suit. Kai hits him first, then the others join as they kick the crewman to death. Christopher takes his group to a secure place in the ship, while Zack's group goes into the med bay and they arm themselves. Christopher's group tries to figure out what to do and some of them want to give up, saying they can't do anything in the moment. They think they should join Zack's group and try to detain him later because his group has weapons and they don't. Sela realizes that Christopher knows about the weapons hidden on the ship in the secret compartment. Christopher goes to find it by himself. He opens a compartment and crawls inside, searching for it. When he finally finds it, he can't open it and an alarm starts blaring, which Julie and another crewman hear. They hear him inside the compartments too and tell Zack about it. Christopher gets out to get some tools to open the compartment, but when he comes back, the other group is already taking the compartments apart. They open the secret compartment and find the weapons. Kai thinks they're meant for the third generation, but Zack says they are for them. Two people from Christopher's group want to join Zack and the others. Zack asks where the rest are hiding. Scylla, Phoebe, and Christopher devise a plan how to get close to Zack. He suggests that he should kill him, but Phoebe doesn't like it. Scylla watches them on the monitor and sees that they're moving, coming after them. They cut their power and arrive at the room. Scylla tells her group not to resist as the others storm the room and grab them. Scylla stops them as they are dragging Christopher away and asks to talk privately to Zack. She says she wants to be with him and join his group as she walks up to him. But he rejects her, laughing at her, when Phoebe appears asking if they've all gone crazy. She says they can decide not to act the way they have, but they all tell her to shut up. Suddenly Kai kills her to the shock of everyone, including Zack. But he turns it around and goes after Christopher. He and Scylla escape, but the others hunt for them throughout the ship. 
They hide in a vent, but the others quickly find which one it is. Zack shoots inside, as Julie tells him to be careful, because he's destroying their food supply. He sends one of his men after them to see if he got them, but they escape again. Suddenly, someone shoots at them, so they start looking for weapons. Christopher finds a fire extinguisher, and as Kai comes inside the med bay, they incapacitate him and accidentally kill him. Zack finds them fast and shoots after them. As they run away, they get into an airlock and Christopher tells Ella to get into a spacesuit. He covers the window of the airlock. When Zack reaches it, he shoots without hesitation. Suddenly he's sucked inside because the hatch to the outside has been opened. He grabs Zilla and goes to close the hatch, fighting with her and eventually stabbing her with a knife. Christopher pushes him outside the hatch, but as they fight, ends up sucked out in space himself. Before Zack can close the hatch, Sela kicks him out of it. She searches for Christopher, waiting for him to come back and suddenly sees him grabbing onto the ship. The two of them come back inside and tell the others that Zack is gone. They put down their weapons. Some time later, all of the crew is having lunch in the cantina. Sela asks Christopher how they can make sure something like that doesn't happen again. They listen to some of Richard's recordings. Again, in which he says that no matter what bad happens on the mission, the ones that prevail are proof that humans are worth saving. The crew votes for a new chief again, and they choose Zilla. She records a diary in which she says that they will vote for everything from that moment on and that they will still not go back to the blue. The crew continues repairing the ship and work together in peace as time goes by. Sela can be seen pregnant and the baby is Christopher's. The baby is born. A few years later, it can be seen running on the ship and joining other children. Those children grow up on the ship as the first generation grows old. Years since the start of the mission the humanitas can be seen floating in space and engaging its drive to land on the planet. The older generations and the younger ones look toward their new home on the alien planet. Thanks for watching please subscribe for more videos.